teacher and now yeah, we're welcome. working in the student play session. Thank you so yeah. much. And yeah, I'm sorry welcome. if you joined me. I had a class. Yeah, welcome. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start reading out the questions. Yes. So the first one is, there are many instances of interactions where we can be exposed to sin inadvertently. For example, at worst during a Christmas party where intoxication is taking place or in the metro or at school with couples together performing haram acts in public or billboards with emphasis on beauty fashion with revealing pictures or depictions of haram acts. These interactions have an effect on our soul. How do we protect our soul from this negative effect? What is important is we need to remain alert and try as much as possible not to associate. So not let them affect you and not associate yourself with these bad things. But if you are alert, you are not associating yourself, but it happens when you are there, it happens or it's on the you know, billboard, etc. It's not going to harm you. It's better if it's not there, but it's not going to harm you. As I said, you have control over your heart. Even if, for example, uh, my neighbor is playing, you know, bad music or, you know, I don't know, uh, in the, for example, I don't know, taxi, for example. I try to, as much as pot possible, control the environment and make it better. But if it's not in my control, it's not going to harm me. Actually, I will be uh, rewarded by Allah for suffering for the sake of my faith. I'm suffering here and I would be uh, helped and assisted. What is important not to let them affect you and so that you would also say, OK, now let me also try this. Let me you know, you know, experience this and not to be associated with them so that you would be somehow supporting them. that because they are young it is okay for them to sin and then repent when they get older and start fresh then what are some downfalls of such a mentality and what are some permanent effects yeah actually for the youngsters sins are more dangerous and more harmful it's like what if you have a new dress you just purchase a new dress it has not yet been washed it's very new if some uh, drops of ink drop on this is terrible but if I have an old dress <laughs> for 10 years 20 years ago and many times I have washed it and you know again put it on it's not that dangerous Youngsters are like a new dress. Their heart is clean. And even one scene can affect it. But old people, somehow, they have survived. You know, many times they have made maybe Toba, etc. Alhamdulillah. So even they shouldn't, you know, take risk. But for youngsters, it's much more worse, much more critical. It's like someone who is already suffering from some disease. So he has 10 types of disease. Now he gets the 11th. But someone who is quite healthy and fit should not let any disease come. Say, no, I am very strong. So, no. So there is something in the youths, a kind of purity, innocence, freshness of the heart, you know, not being suffering from darkness of the scenes, darkness of bad choices, darkness of bad surroundings, you know, and then, uh, got, you know, maybe unconsciously following them. Many ways we have been affected with our own choices. But youngsters are not yet affected by these things. So I very much request youngsters to safeguard their purity and innocence. Nothing can replace that. And also once I mentioned this, I don't know if it was for you as well or not, uh, but first I mentioned this in one of the uh, 
Muslim Student Council of UK, you know, that every person in future of his life or her life, uh, when faced with challenges, would back, go back and use a battery, a reserve of energy that they have. All your uh, good experiences, enjoyable experiences in the childhood are very important. If you have had very happy childhood, then in future it would always help you. It's like, uh, you know, it's a battery that I have emotionally, it's charged and I can always go and use that battery. There is part of this battery that can only be charged if when you were young, you were religious, you were pious, you were obedient. It gives you such a strength in future if you have always been, especially in your young age, praying, fasting, being a good person. It helps a lot in future. People without that still can be you know, doing well, but it's very difficult. So never lose that opportunity of, in your first few years of uh, Bulug, you are nice, virtuous, pious. So if you want, <laughs> this is of course uh, like a uh, joke, but if really someone wants to be sinful, let it be later. At least the first few years of your life, put things, this is say, like foundation of a building. At least make the foundation proper. Okay, if you do something wrong in the second floor, third floor, at least the foundation can keep the rest of the building. So youths should never take risk with their purity. eliminated social life there is a growing feeling of depression and loneliness especially among the youth how do we counter this feeling yeah F few things uh, one is deep uh, spirituality if a person has a spirituality actually would not suffer too much when they are alone if I enjoy my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I enjoy myself, if I have honor for myself, value for myself, my thoughts, my thinking. So I don't need always to go out or be with people. So first we should strengthen our contemplative life, our spirituality, number one. Number two, use any possible opportunity for connecting to good people, like-minded people. I spend more time with family, I spend online time with friends, good friends. Number three, make yourself physically uh, busy and if possible, tire yourself physically. It's amazing how much when your body is active, helps your soul. Sitting somewhere and doing nothing or just, you know, watching or, you know, for example, videos, f films or, you know, listening to music, for example, all the time. T not only uh, is wastage of time, it affects our spirituality. So do many physical activities, even if it is walking, even if it is carrying, I don't know, things. If you want to do something at home, for example, change, you know, the place of sofa, etc. or library you want to redesign or... I don't know, work on your garden, uh, anything that uh, engages your body and makes your body tired, it's amazing that it is good for your body actually and also for your soul. development lectures you spoke about Prophet Muhammad being adopted to the peaceful during his time. He was present and all the other Aima were present with their respective communities. Being how Imam Mahdi is in occultation, how can he exercise being a doctor to us when he is not being physically present with us? The sun behind the clouds analogy is a nice metaphor, but it does not respond to the question. 
In essence, it does not provide enough details to make it clear how our imam can be our physician. If you could provide more insight, it would be greatly appreciated. We don't need to directly benefit from our own. For example, like your marja. Every person should have a marja. And we need guidance of marja. How to pray, how to fast, how to give homes, zakat, etc. But I don't need to ask my marja directly. There are uh, books and there are uh, scholars who tell me what is the fatwa of my marja. With respect to Imam Mahdi Ajal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, he said, refer to the people who give you our teachings. أَمَّا الْحَوَادِثُ الْوَاقِعَةِ فَارْجِعُوا فِيهَا إِلَىٰ رُوَاتِ أَحَادِيثِنَا فَإِنَّهُمْ حُجَّةِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَأَنَا حُجَّةُ اللَّهِ Imam says when new issues emerge, refer to the people who tell you our hadith, our teachings. They are my hujja uh, over you. And I am hujja of Allah. So Imam is hujja over them and they are hujja over us. So we are benefiting from Imam Mahdi Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif through our ulama, through our marajah, through our hosas, and therefore we are not left without guidance. In addition to that, any person who ask Imam Mahdi Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif for extra guidance, extra guidance, not what, what is in the books, what is in the books you have to read. What ulama say on member, you have to listen. But if you need extra guidance, a specific guidance for your personal issues that is not mentioned anywhere and no one can give you an answer, Imam is going to help you. Actually, his main position is he is for hedaya, for guidance. Therefore, he's going to help you, especially for guidance. If I have you know, other issues, you know, illness, money, etc., I have problems. Uh, and I do tabassul, inshallah they will give you. But if you need guidance, that's the top priority for Imam to give because Allah has sent them as guide. So the next question is, there are many youngsters who get heartbroken and depressed at very young ages and have a very hard time dealing with it. What do you suggest to them? For what reason? For that get heartbroken and depressed at young ages yeah what's the reason it's uh, because it can be different you know is it because for example family are not uh, caring and kind is it because there is no community they are alone is it because for example they have poverty i don't, I don't know what because depending on the issues uh, maybe there are different answers but basically as i said we must believe in our uh, strengths Every person has a fortress inside. You have all the things that you need inside that fortress. Just believe in yourself. Open this treasure box and you can enjoy. This is why ma'arifatun nafs is very important. Self-knowledge is very important. Because there is so much of beauty inside every person that if we humbly discover that beauty inside us it's enough to give us pleasure for all your life especially after some time when uh, there are virtues that you have worked hard to get them they give extra joy for example if i was not organized i became organized if i was you know selfish then i not be become selfless if i was not generous i be they give so much pleasure so you it's more than watching, a, for example, uh, going to a museum and watch those things there. You can see what is on display in your nafs. If you have worked hard to get good qualities, good virtues, good actions, or if you have suffered and remained patient, they can give lots of joy. The worst thing is if we look at inside and we don't see anything to be proud of. Of course, in a realistic way, because some people are so humble that they say, oh, I have no good qualities. No, in a realistic way. You have to be able to see the good points and be thankful for them. Okay, 
and the final question is, what is the difference or similarity between the soul and the nafs? Soul and nafs are the same, but depending on what we mean by nafs, because in uh, our literature, nafs is used in different ways. We have nafs nabati, we have nafs haywani, nafs insani, or nafs natare. So, because according to Muslim philosophers, even plants have nafs. Plants have nafs because plants have this characteristic that they don't react always in the same way you know if you have a for example i don't know sugar and water and put for example water into this uh, sugar always is the same reaction but you see plants are not like this if you have 10 uh, flower pots of i don't know sunflower each of them you know acts differently there are similarities, but each of them is there. Therefore, they say anything that acts من غير وطيرة واحدة It's not in the same way. This has nafs. So, nabat has nafs. Every plant has nafs. Then, animals have a stronger nafs because they act with decision and behave and move. And then, we have human nafs. And according to Mullah Sadra, actually we have all the three together. Nafs Nabati, Nafs Haywani, Nafs Insani together. Sometimes, you know, a person, for example, has brain death, their body is still is functioning, but they say has a vegetative state, means Nabati. This is from the same philosophical idea. So, depending on what you mean by nafs, if you mean nafs and sani and human soul, they are the same. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you are welcome. May Allah bless you all, inshallah. Tamasa dua, please. Salam. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. I hope, inshallah, you enjoy your sessions together and uh, spend quality time with each other, inshallah. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. So, is my part finished? Yes, I, I believe so. Okay, ta thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Al-Tamasa Dua. Fiyamallah. Yeah, man.